Well, we continue to follow the latest developments regarding avian flu in this region. The latest update here, a dog in Oshawa has died after contracting avian flu in a first-of-its-kind of case in Canada. Meanwhile, city officials in Mississauga now say cases of H5N1 or avian flu have been confirmed there after receiving several calls reporting sick or dead birds. So to talk more about this, we're joined this afternoon by Thomas Tenkate, Associate Professor, School of Occupational Health and uh, Occupational and Public Health at Toronto Metropolitan University. Uh, Professor, thanks for joining us this afternoon. We highlighted the fact that this is quite a rare incidence of a dog uh, contracting avian flu here. But can you explain a little bit about how this happens and are there concerns that with a case like this happening that perhaps there could be more in the area specifically where this dog had the situation happen? Yes, uh, yes, thanks. Yes, so so definitely uh, for avian influenza, there's the uh, wild uh, aquatic birds are really the where, where the, the flu is, is circulating in. And so, so it means that wherever you've got uh, these wild, wild birds, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, geese and, and the like, then, then it's possible that, that, that they might be affected. And, and they, even if they are affected, they won't look, look like they're sick generally. And so, so it means that anywhere you've got uh, large flocks of these, uh, of, uh, of geese and, and other water birds, you have to assume that they, they are having... Uh, Avian, they are infected with avian influenza, and so so that means that any uh, domestic animals that might come in contact with them mm -hmm. could could get infected. And 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 basically, the way that uh, someone gets infected, uh, another animal or a person, is through contact with the, either the feces mm -hmm. uh, or uh, mucus uh, or or other excretions from one of these birds. And so so basically, it means that uh, you know sort of. Uh, if you anywhere any contact with uh, uh, you know the feces of these birds uh, is is highly infective, uh, and as well as uh, you know any any sort of mucus or, or other mm -hmm. respiratory secretions. So so basically, if a uh, um, you know a domestic pet, say a dog or a cat, gets involved with uh, you know getting close to one of these uh, uh, you know geese or, or whatever, then, then they can be in, infected uh, quite quite easily. And so, so it's really about keeping, keeping pets away from, from uh, sort of wild, you know, wild uh, water aquatic birds as much as possible. Uh, and, and, you know, that's really the, the key thing. But, but you know, we all, we're also seeing it uh, becoming more widespread in, in poultry, poultry flocks around the country as well. And so it's, it's, it's not just for Canada, but uh, North America wide, there's quite a lot of concerns now that this is really becoming uh, a big issue. Uh, and, and speaking of that, can you put the con context around the GTA sort of H5N1 avian flu currently? Is this looking any different than it has in years past? Well, I, I definitely, the, you know, what we're seeing is that there's there's uh, more more cases being being identified, uh, more flocks being identified, and so so yes, in, in comparison to previous years, we're we're seeing seeing an increase, uh, you know, over 2022 and now through into 2023. So right. so definitely, it's you know, from a from a human perspective, it, it's a pretty rare thing for for people to become infected, but but the you know theoretically people can be infected as well as for domestic animals, say dogs, cats, uh, uh, domestic uh, birds, you know, that they can all become infected if there's uh, contact with uh, these uh, wild uh, aquatic birds. Is there anything that you can do if you have been infected? Like, can, can you take your dog to a vet and get some sort of um, mm. remedy? Yeah, definitely, you know, the, for, for pets, uh, just like humans, there's a range of uh, symptoms that they can show. And so, so definitely if, if, a, if an animal is starting to seem that they're unwell, uh, then, you know, as quickly as you can, get them to a vet. Uh, but, but, uh, but obviously, you know, the, the spectrum is quite large on, on the sorts of symptoms. And so, so definitely, you know, monitor uh, your, your pets in terms of what they might you know, symptoms they might be showing, uh, you know, sort of if they sort of seem a bit, uh, you know, a bit of lethargy, a bit un unwell in terms of, you know, lack of appetite, if they've, their eyes are sort of got looking a bit bit like with conjunctivitis or, mm. or other, or if they're having some difficulty breathing, you know, those sorts of symptoms are, are keys that they, they might be uh, infected with H, uh, the avian influenza. And, and basically, you know, we, the, the quicker that there's treatment, the, the quicker that, uh, you know, that they might be able to be saved because, but, uh, because def definitely, you know, we know that uh, animals can, can die from, from this. Right. Okay. Well, this is good to know. Really appreciate your perspective this afternoon. Thomas Tenkate, Associate Professor School of Occupational and Public Health at Toronto Metropolitan University. Thanks for the time.